So the question is, is what are C name records in regards to DNS and why do they matter? So when you go out and you purchase your domain name from GoDaddy or HostGator or whoever else, you know, for failnormal.com or geekfieldnotes.com, what happens is you'll go and you'll sign in to your DNS manager and you'll see a bunch of different configurations. You'll see your A records, you'll see C name records, you may see text records, you'll see MX records. And so you'll be sitting there and you'll be taking a look at the C name records, and it's important to understand what the C name records represent. So, what the C name records represent is what they do is they point subdomains for your domain to other domain names. So, with the A records, you can point subdomains towards IP addresses 10.1.10.1.10.1, something along those lines. The C names allow you to point your subdomains to another domain. So, you can point mail. And you can have mail pointed to, let's say, mail.google.com. So why the C name records are important is in the modern world, many times we don't run the servers that we use for our services. So back in the day, way back in the day, 10 years ago, right? We ran our own web servers and we ran our own email servers and we ran our own VPN servers and we ran our own FTP servers and we ran all of our own servers. And so back in those days, many times we knew what the specific IP addresses were and so we could point A records to the specific IP addresses. Well, nowadays, uh, many times we use other people's services uh, to provide services for our company. So for email services, many times we'll use Google Apps or we'll use Outlook 365. And so if you're using subdomains and you want to be able to point the subdomain to another domain, what you would then do is you plug in mail and then you would plug in the domain name for Google or the domain name for Outlook 365 that you've been given to by that particular vendor. That way, when somebody types in mail.failnormal.com or mail.elithecomputerguy.com, what happens is they will get routed to the Google servers or to the Outlook 365 servers instead of just simply to your email server. And so this is an easy way to be able to give a naming convention to your users to give them a good user experience while also using other people's services, other vendor service. So you can have the VPN. So let's say you're paying for VPN service for all of your employees. Instead of giving them some, you know, instead of the email, you know, being a specific domain name and the VPN services being a specific domain name and all these all these different domain names, you know, Salesforce and all that, what you can do is you can simply have VPN so that will be the subdomain vpn.failnormal.com and you can have vpn pointed to your VPN service provider. Uh, and so that way somebody can just plug in VP when they're going to set up their, their VPN system or their VPN service, they can just plug in vpn.failnormal.com, put in their username, put in their password, and then that will route to that VPN server and then they'll be able to access it. So you can do interesting things with say Salesforce. So let's say your company uses Salesforce. Instead of having them go to the salesforce.com uh, domain directly, directly, what you could do is you could have CRM as the subdomain. So crm.failnormal.com, you could have CRM pointed to the domain you've been given by Salesforce. So instead of them having to remember that and put that in specifically, they can just plug in crm.failnormal.com and then they will get routed to the portal for Salesforce. So that's why C names are important. It is important to remember with C names, you can put domain names in, you cannot put IP addresses. The other thing to remember with C names is that in the A record, one of the only A records you need is the at symbol A record. So the at symbol A record will point to the IP address generally of your, your main web server. So for your, your www.failnormal.com, that, that A record will point to that server, the IP address. So one of the things that you can do is in the C names, instead of pointing to another domain name, what you could do is you could simply have it point to at, right? So let's say your web server and your FTP server and your VPN server are all sitting on your main server. So in the A record, you have at point to the IP address of your main server. And then in the C names, what you do is you have www and then you point that to at. And then you have FTP and you point that to at. And what happens is the DNS simply plugs in the IP address that you have 
configured in that A record for at, and then everything will go there. So that's kind of a way that you can use a wild card in C names. So that's what C names are, and that's why they're important.